Happy Friday, everybody. This is Dan LaMontagne. It's Friday, June 4th, 2010. Well, there was big news today in the stock market and in world news. Uh, to start off, um, the Dow Jones, which is a measure of the stock market, uh, if you haven't looked into that, um, has actually well below 10,000. Now, it plummeted 323 points to just about 9,931, uh, <clears throat> which is just one indicator that we're not headed for what's called a V-shaped recovery. Uh, when people refer to a V-shaped recovery, they're talking about how you started off and then you dipped and then you're coming back up. And a lot of, a lot of uh, economists are now saying that maybe we're not going to head right back up to where we once were. Maybe it's going to be an L-shaped recovery or maybe it's going to be a vertical line. You never know. Um, so the Dow's down uh, about 323 points, which is a major drop um, uh, on, on a day. It's greater than 3% um, of the entire uh, um, value of the Dow. Um, in addition, gold is uh, one, of the, one of the few things that's uh, up in the face of the stock market crashing. Um, it's up better than $12 an ounce, and even in the face of the dollar rising uh, in value, uh, due to the fact that sovereign debt issues, which I'll get into, in the euro are getting even worse. So, um, why did the stock market drop uh, and why did gold rise today? Well, there were two big um, things in the news. Uh, the first thing uh, in the domestic, um, in domestic news was that uh, we had a disappointing jobs report. Now, personally, I didn't expect this to be um, anything more than either um, a dog and pony show in that the, uh, the jobs report was not representing what was going on or it was going to be a bad jobs report. And it turned out to be a pretty bad jobs report. Um, although uh, we did see, uh, according to the government, a decrease in unemployment from about 9.9% to 9.6%, that was well under the projected amount uh, of uh, decrease. And the reason that that's not good um, is that uh, if you've heard, uh, obviously we've had a lot of census uh, job hirings. These are temporary jobs that are going to go away. Um, so a lot of those jobs uh, that were created uh, by the government are really only temporary jobs, and they're going to go right away uh, with the rest of them. And I think there were something like 20,000 jobs that were not census jobs, were not temporary jobs that uh, were added to the economy, according to the government. But the problem is, is that in addition to the fact that um, we had um, only 20,000 jobs gained, that's 20,000 jobs per the government's manipulated way of calculating the unemployment rate. Now, you might say, how can they manipulate calculations of the unemployment rate? Isn't it pretty easy? Well, it turns out that the government's pretty much cooking the numbers because they don't count people who aren't looking for work. And it turns out that the the employment pool, the number of people who are actually employed, has dropped uh, in the past month. In the month of May, the number of people who are actually working or seeking work has dropped. And so the government does not count the people who have actually given up going to work and who are collecting Social Security checks or um, anything like that. So basically, um, the numbers are, are a lot worse and unemployment has effectively risen, uh, even though it's not reflected in the government's numbers. Now, probably the biggest news of today uh, that, uh, that occurred was that Hungary, now in, in addition to uh, Greece, is now saying that there's a very real possibility. The Prime Minister of Hungary uh, came out in, new, in news earlier today saying there's a very, very real possibility that Hungary is going to default on its debts um, and it's not going to be able to pay back uh, the loans it uh, took out um, from its creditors. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, we all know what happened when Greece uh, uh, started uh, uh, indicated that uh, they would not be able to pay back um, debts that they, they needed a bailout. Well, there were riots in the streets. There were lots of you know, things that are not financially uh, meaningful, but uh, certainly social unrest is not a good thing. But in terms of the financial markets, obviously we saw a huge crash in uh, the American stock exchanges, in the world stock exchanges. We saw a lot of the economic numbers starting, starting to go south. Uh, that's one of the reasons we're starting to see the Dow Jones continue to go down. But in addition to the fact that Hungary is, is now also um, saying that it, it may default, uh, this puts pressure on all countries which issue sovereign debt. 
Now, if you think about, you know, what country can you think of that has probably the most sovereign debt and has, um, you know, increasing amounts of pressure on uh, that country to pay back those debts? Well, the United States. That's, that's, that's certainly uh, a country that comes to mind. In fact, uh, China has been starting to pull out a lot of its... Um, a lot of its bonds that it has in the United States to try to get out of the United States um, and um, avoid losing its money. And so by virtue of the fact that countries are now starting to default on, its, on their debts, this has a number of implications. For starters, um, when a country defaults on its debts, it puts uh, sort of a negative taste in the mouth of the lenders. Now, the lenders around the world want to get paid back. So you have countries like China, which are, are creditor nations, they lend money. And you have countries like the United States, Greece, Hungary, uh, other countries in the Eurozone who borrow money. And whenever a country borrows money, it's expected that that country is going to pay back that debt with interest. When the country doesn't pay the debt back, then the creditors will either have to do one of two things. Well, first, first of all, they lose money. But second of all, the next time they want to lend money, they're not going to lend it at a low interest rate. They're going to lend it at a very high interest rate. And so it makes it very difficult for countries that have defaulted or countries that uh, creditors are worried, worried about defaulting to get money uh, to borrow. So this has a lot of negative implications for the United States because um, as creditors around the world get burned by what's going on in Hungary and Greece, they're going to be a lot more wary of loaning to governments, specifically big ones like the United States, that are starting to have more and more troubles with their finances. Um, so certainly uh, the big question is, does the U.S. have a debt problem just like Hungary and Greece? And I